Yo, Shalom, Shalom. You are now tuned in to all that rah rah with your Hebrew brother Milo Judah. In this episode, brothers, we are going to be covering a man with multiple wives, but we are going to look at it from the aspect of the insults. When people love to say, oh, you must have your wives brainwashed, or oh, you must have manipulated your women for them to agree to this, or your, your women must not be confident in themselves, or they must not be that intelligent. You know, uh, brothers in the, in the knowledge who, you know, the knowledge of the, of the scriptures, we've heard it all, all, the, all of the insults. So with that being said, we're going to accomplish this by allowing a man with multiple wives to speak. We are going to allow him to speak on his experiences. We are going to allow his wives to speak on their experiences. And of course, their children as well. And with that being said, we are going to jump straight into it. So without further ado, let's analyze. We started this poly union together as three individuals. Off the rip, the insecure sister's gonna be like, why did he kiss her first? <laughs> You're all heterosexual. He's everything that I look for. I find it pretty funny that the brother had to disclose that he and his two wives are heterosexual. And the reason I find it funny is because there is a remnant of women who call themselves Israelites who will say that they are pro polygynists but the only reason that they are pro polygynists is because that they think that they will get some form of pleasure, sexual pleasure, out of a man having more than one wife. What am I saying? I'm saying a lot of these women still have the spirit of being a lesbian on them. And I've seen it with my own two eyes. Brothers have contacted me saying, bro, did you, did you see this shit? This, this is sister saying. <laughs> so, yes, I find it funny that the brother had to basically give a disclaimer. Yes, me and my wives are heterosexual. And a husband. However, they are sister wives. Best friends, sisters, family. <laughs> this accusation. Best friend, sister, family. You know, so-called black man, at the end of the day, that's honestly what polygyny should be about amongst the women. They are supposed to have a sister to ride or die with, right? Of course, up under your headship, up under your leadership, up under your guardianship. But that's the benefit of it, if they allow it to be. But most of these sisters, especially, you know, the sisters who call themselves Israel, they don't love the next woman as they love themselves. They don't love their neighbor as they love themselves. Man, let me tell you, brother, something. And it's just me being honest. I don't care what any woman says or how she claims she knows the Bible. The moment a scripture comes up that she disagrees with or she can't see herself doing that or, you know, submitting to that scripture or that, that precept or that commandment, She's not going to do it unless she has a man who is going to oversee her and make her do what the scriptures say. And when I say make, I don't mean force because we can't force anyone to do anything, especially in this society. But as far as not allowing her to get away with bullshit, yes, that's what women need. That they are brainwashed. We get it often. <laughs> And I'm not shocked that you three would receive the accusation or that individuals would accuse the husband of brainwashing the wives. But what people don't understand about polygyny, for the most part, is that women who are in polygynous relationships, they want to be there. Now, there are some instances and some cases where a man, he will lie and, you know, lay down with a woman and trap her. And then he'll go get another woman and do the same thing. And now he, quote unquote, has two wives because, you know, some brothers teach that sex is marriage. And, you know, they end up trapping a woman or trapping two women. So, you know, let's not be biased. That, that does happen. And that happens in Israel. But speaking on the, the women who want to be there, they actually love it. They actually love having a sister wife. They actually love 
not having to do all of the housework, having having, you know, their husband delegate responsibilities to them where they don't have to do it themselves. You understand that so far individuals to just call people brainwashed for something that they don't understand. We understand that, you know, most people when they don't understand something, they'll talk shit about it. But no. No. We can clearly see with our own eyes when we look at these two women that they enjoy being with their man. Someone actually said the comment yesterday to Jamie saying, listen, Jamie, you are beautiful, but he does not love you. Why don't you just leave? You know, I'm almost willing to bet that bet money that that was a so-called black woman who told the sister Jamie to leave her man. I'm almost willing to bet that because they don't know what love is. Right? She said he doesn't love you. You should leave him. But what is love? Love is all about loyalty and sacrifice. You heard me. And I'm pretty sure that you will have women who will say, well, how can you be loyal to someone when you have more than one woman? But if I told you off rip that I'm not into monogamy, I'm not a monogamous man, isn't that me being loyal to you? Because I could, I could allow you to come into this thinking that you are going to be the only woman. And then once I show you that I'm not monogamous, that I'm, I'm very into polygyny, but I lied to you or I, I wasn't transparent with you from the jump. Now that's what causes a broken heart. But if I tell you off rip that I'm not monogamous, how is that man disloyal? That's called open communication. Right now it's up to the woman if she wants to receive that and understand that and deal with that. But if a woman decides to stay with the man who tells her off rip that he's not monogamous, he's being loyal. But that I'm just, our, our women don't understand when a man is transparent with them. They want to argue a man's point. They want to go back and forth with them. But they also want men to be truthful. So that's just a, a, a line that brothers have to tell. Right? Because no matter how truthful you are, you have to understand that they're still going to find a reason to try to poke holes in the truth. Right? But like I said, I'm, I'm almost willing to bet money that that was a so-called black woman who told her to leave her man. Some people look at it and say, you know, you're exploiting your children. So how did you feel when you first found out about Lacey coming into your life? I don't understand how a man having more than one wife is exploiting your children. That makes no sense. But when you actually look at this video, you will see that there are a lot of so-called black women in the comments basically saying, you know, when, when the children were asked how do they feel about their father bringing in another woman, that none of the children were comfortable with it, and you can see it all over their face. But what these women failed to understand is this is a show. <laughs> and wh what do I mean by that? Shows are edited. They are edited. So therefore, when that question was asked to them, how do you feel about it? The next scene that you see, that is a scene that was edited. That wasn't their direct reaction to the question. My name is Kevin Wesley. This is my beautiful wife, Jamie. This is my beautiful wife, Lacey. That's right, brother, let it be known. This is my beautiful wife, and this is my beautiful wife. That's right. We call ourselves the Rise Family. Rise and shine, beautiful souls. Mondays and Tuesdays, uh, Jamie and I spend time together. Of course, we obviously we sleep together on those days. Lacey and I spend time together on Wednesday, Thursday. Damn, that's good. It's so light. It's really good. And then from Friday to Sunday, we alternate. So this is just me and my personal preference. But I'm not the type of individual to say, hey, Monday and Tuesday is your day. Wednesdays and Thursdays are your days. And Saturdays and Sundays, I mean, I'm sorry, Fridays and Saturdays, we alternate days. And uh, I just like to move how I want to move in my home. Right? So I'm not the type to set days and say, hey, this is, this is your set day. No, if I want to watch a movie with one of my ribs at 10 in the morning, and, you know, go jogging with the other rib at 5 p.m., and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to move how I want to move in my home. 
That's just me, though. That's just my preference. I never tell, you know, another brother how to run his home, right? Because obviously it works for him. It works for them. But just me? No, I'm going to move how I move. We have so much in common. We love doing pretty much the same thing. We have the same thoughts and everything. Then we share like, each other's sentences and all oh. we have to do is look at each other. We be like, yep. Now, I do understand that this is in front of the camera, so they could be acting. But from what we see, these two clearly have a bond. And they clearly have a sisterhood between the two of them. And that's what a lot of sisters, they fail to understand when it comes to a man having more than one wife, is that you inherit a sister. You inherit a sister. You inherit a woman who naturally cares about you, especially if, you know, y'all practice in the same faith. Right, then you obviously have someone who carries your beliefs, who is going to teach your child and allow you to teach their child the same things that, you know, one of the other believes. Right, so you, you're not worried about any disparities or your child being around someone that you can't trust. Right, and of course, you know, if you love your man like you say you do, then you always know that, you know, he's when you're not around, he has someone around him who is going to make sure that he's happy, who is going to make sure that you know, whatever situation he's in is benefiting him. Or she's trying to make it beneficial for him. All right. Jamie and I got married super duper young. We had children early. We were together for about 14 years. And then we separated about five years ago. And during that time, I was dating and things like that. Lacey and I met online. I knew exactly who he was and was actually a fan of his work. <laughs> right. Hey, that sister said that she was a fan of that man's work. Brothers, your wife should be your biggest fan. Your wife or your wives, they should be your biggest fans. Period. And shine, beautiful souls. I use my platforms to teach and enlighten the world. Raise your vibration, raise your energy. And we've just kind of been like glue ever since. I have not previously had a poly relationship. Frank, it's gonna be done in a minute. We'll let you know when it's done. No problem. I wasn't sure if I could come in behind another woman, but Kevin was separated, so I got to meet him as an individual, not as a pair. I would say when it comes to, you know, not knowing if you can come in behind another woman, I see that's an issue that a lot of women have. Uh, they say things like, you know, if she, if if she's serving you, then what am I supposed to do? Right, and that's a good problem to have because that's a woman who, you know, wants to serve you, but she's trying to understand how is the dynamic going to work. So that's a good problem to have, brothers. A lot of brothers they explode. <laughs> They'll explode on that woman when they, you know, when a woman asks them certain questions. Right, and like I said, you have to understand the difference between uh, a woman questioning you to be combative and a woman asking you questions for understanding. Right, that's something that we have to, as men, sometimes slow down on and, and actually get the full understanding of what our women is talking about. Because they can't submit and be all in to something that they don't understand. Right, so when they're asking you questions for clarity, brothers, give your woman clarity. I got to fall in love with him on my own. Y'all ready to eat? So we started this poly union as three individuals. And me not having biological children, I was just like, yes, those are the type of children I wanted. Hey, man. <laughs> All praise to the most high that that sister didn't come into that union with another man's child or children, right? And you will have individuals that would say, oh, how can you say all praise to the most high that she she didn't come in with any children? Because a lot of these women are out here having sex liberally, right? What, I'm pretty sure a lot of you brothers have heard it. Oh, I'm a sexually liberated woman. I can do what I want to do, which is true. You can have sex with who you want to have sex with, but that doesn't mean that I have to clean up your shit, right? So I say that, all praise to the most high that this woman didn't come in with another man's child. So basically she can 
be his woman fully there is no other personalities or other souls that she has to care about there is nothing else tying her down she can just be a full on wife right now if, if she did have children and the brother decided to take her in and her child they're all praises to the most high for that as well but the point is a man's man we are not looking to take in a woman with a child brothers you never come first and I'm not even necessarily saying that they are wrong but as a man you want to be a woman's first priority right so when you're not there that causes all kinds of rifts in the household especially if you want to marry that woman so there's nothing wrong with the man taking on a woman with a child but I guarantee you that any man that you ask hey would you rather deal with the woman who already had a child or would you rather deal with the woman who doesn't have a child I say about 99% are going to say I'd rather create my own family than you know get added into a family if that makes sense rise and shine beautiful souls rise and shine beautiful souls so listen I'm this world renowned motivational speaker when I became poly it was like you know what I want to use my relationship and my family to continue to enlighten the world. Often people who are happy cannot wait to tell somebody about it. That's actually why I went public. Wow. Most ridiculous question is, y'all must lack self-love. Yes, brother, that is a ridiculous statement, but it's also a common statement that these women say to other women who are in a polygynous union. Oh, you must lack self-love. How? How? Lacking self-love, lacking self-respect is laying down with multiple men, having children by multiple men. At least that woman in that polygynous union is laying down with one man. Right? You know, women always say, oh, you, you lack self-love because how can you share your man or oh, you lack self-respect you have no confidence because you share your man but it's more than two million black women in america than so-called black men so point being is somebody gonna share if everybody wants to be married somebody is going to share that's just how nature is going to work so we experience judgment in all facets of our life simply because we live our lives unapologetically we get it on social media we get it when we walk down the street, and we can see parents cover their children's eyes. Here is a photo of Jamie and Lacey. To me, I feel like you should see beauty, but if you go to the comments, you will find people who don't see beauty. They actually see something else. See, look here, this is crazy. This is someone commenting on here to say he really loves her more than the first wife. You know, it's crazy that people will say the things that they say on social media because they know that they won't be reprimanded for it. Why would you say, <laughs> why would you say that he loves his second wife more than he loves his first wife? How would you know that? But that just goes to show that people project their insecurities and their unhappiness on the next person, especially if you seem happy, then they want to tear apart what you've created there's no point of people speaking on their relationship yes it's public that the man is a polygynous man so what you should do is speak against what he teaches if you disagree with what he teaches but to firmly put your mouth on that man's uh his uh his union that's very disrespectful uh, someone actually sent a comment yesterday to Jamie saying, listen, Jamie, you are beautiful, but he does not love you. Why don't you just leave? I get judgment mostly on social media because I'm looked at as the person who couldn't let go, even though we were separated for many, many years. Sometimes people forget that you're, you're a human and they just feel like they can say whatever they want. I understand, yeah, we put our life out there. People have so much focus around the three of us that they forget that we're a family. There are children that are part of this family. And that's the point that I was making. So my children has adapted to this dynamic very quickly. They adapted faster than I did. 
So how did you feel when you first found out about Lacey coming into your life? I was nervous. I didn't really social interaction, you know? But um, I've, got, I've gotten used to her over the um, months. When I found out about Lacey, I was fine with it. Having someone new around the house, a little uncomfortable, but nothing stood out. I had this friend come over, and like he didn't really like understand. So I was trying to tell him that there's my mom, and then my dad, and then there's Lacey. I don't know if he got it, but... Uh, there are a lot of positives and negatives about having a third parent, uh, parental figure. But it wasn't really an issue for us. We were all very independent before, and we're very independent now. So basically, they don't really feel any way about it. That's dad, that's his wives. So be it. And it took an adjustment period for us to get used to a different individual in our house, but now we're used to her. Pretty cut and dry to me. And when the young brother Israel was talking about his friend coming over and that his friend didn't understand the dynamic, well, of course he did. <laughs> That's not what he's used to seeing. Would you see yourself <laughs> in a polygamous relationship at some point in your life? I probably would. Because I prefer my body. So, this is what a lot of women don't understand. If you are with a man who is polygynous, and I'm talking to the, the women of understanding, if you are with a man who is polygynous, you are monogamous anyway, because you're only dealing with one man. It's the man who is polygynous, not you, sis. Otherwise, you would be polygamous or polyamorous or you know anything else that falls up under the umbrella of polygamy. But when it comes to polygyny, and a man having more than one wife says you're monogamous. You only deal with one man. For me, I, I would rather just have like like one one person to myself. Nothing wrong with that, young brother. Basically. <laughs> <laughs> so Monday, Tuesday, uh, Jamie, mm -hmm. you have any, you have anything you want to do on those days? I was thinking of. A, a fun day. You know, those two days is your world. So I know. Down. People ask, do you deal with jealousy? Absolutely. Kev gives Jamie flowers. I mm -hmm. might look and go, where are my flowers? Then I have mm -hmm. to check myself and go, Lacey, you don't even like flowers. Mm -hmm. She gets flowers, I get chocolate. And we're both happy. And see, that's the thing. I'm glad that they said that. I'm glad that they admitted that they deal with jealousy because that's just natural within a woman. That's just natural. But you have to understand your woman. You have to know your woman. If she's a controlling person, then that jealousy is gonna take over her to the point where y'all can't even have anything fruitful. But if she's just a good woman, she just may dislike you having more than one wife, especially in this society because that's not how they are raised up. But if she's naturally a given person, naturally a person who's not the type to be jealous, then eventually she'll come around. You understand that? But the whole point is, brother's going to, you know, this way of thinking and thinking that, you know, he's just gonna have two wives or whatnot and the shit's just gonna be peaches and cream. If monogamy isn't peaches and cream, how the fuck do you think polygyny is gonna be peaches and cream, brothers? Right, everything is gonna take hard work. Everything is gonna take patience and understanding. You have to exercise patience with your woman with your women, you have to exercise understanding with your woman, with your women, right? And that comes from, it can be correction. Sometimes you may have to correct your, your woman more than three or four times on a certain aspect. But if you know in your heart that she's a good woman, then that's just, that's the bed you made, so you're gonna have to lay in it, right? So like the sister said, yeah, I don't even like flowers, but I get jealous sometimes when he buys her flowers. But she checks herself and puts that bullshit to the side because she knows that she has a good man who loves her. They both said it, that he is everything that they desire in a husband. So why would they let a little, you know, a little jealousy or a little unplaced emotion or misplaced emotion, should I say, ruin a good thing? You understand that? So that's something that brothers have to 
be able to gauge with their woman. Is she a good woman? Right. And how does she check her spirit? So let's end this meeting on rise. Hey. On, on three. Rise right. on three. All right. One, two, two three. Rise. Would I add another person to this dynamic? Absolutely not. I am 100% satisfied. I'm, this, is, this is everything. Um, Ditto. Well, all praises to the Most High that this brother is content with what he has and that he feels satisfied. I know brothers who have four wives. I know brothers who desire more wives. <laughs> Bars. <laughs> But not on the real. I myself, I wouldn't take more than two. Um, that's just a personal preference. How would you feel if Jamie wanted to open up the relationship and like introduce a boyfriend? I get this question a lot. All of that was on the table. Yeah, women always ask that question. Well, if, if you can have more than one woman, can I have more than one man? I tell them all the time, you can do what the hell you want to do. You just ain't going to have me. And they both said, we do not want anyone else but you. I'm not looking for another male figure at all. He's everything to me. When you're fulfilled, you don't look for anything else. <laughs> well, all praise to the most top of that. A lot of these women, they want to go tick the tack. And, you know, the society has given them the, in the inclination that they are on the same level as a man to the point where they feel as if they can deal with more than one man, but they don't even understand that if they're laying down with more than one man at a time, they're literally destroying their spirit. And if they go above five partners or so, then that destroys their ability to pair bond. I'm not gonna say destroy, but it makes it a lot harder. I believe women go from uh, having less than five partners, then they have an 80% chance of having a great marriage. And if they you know, go over that number or five or more, then that percentage tends to drop to around 20%. That's not the same for men because men and women are wired differently, right? Sex isn't what makes a man stay around. Yes, sex is great, but a, woman, a woman's ability to respect a man is what makes a man stay around. They're going to go their way for a moment. Love <laughs> is a commitment. What we want to do is like kind of show the world what a family really can do in this world. <gasps> But we can't let that. him go without giving him a bite. Oh. 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 So there you have it, brothers. We see a beautiful family. You know, a man with more than one woman. And people are still going to find a way to talk crazy about them. <laughs> so it's always going to behoove us to, you know, Keep our heads straight. Keep our heads on straight. Continue to walk forward. In this day and age, people are going to talk bad about what they don't understand. Right, but we can never let that get to us. Most people, they are going to have a negative disposition when it comes to what you have going on, especially if you are able to acquire more than one woman. But if you're a man of the most high, and if you're a man, period, you shouldn't let that get to you. You understand? Because that's the decision that you made. All right? And nobody should be able to make you feel bad about your decisions, especially if you're standing 10 toes on them. All right? So with all that being said, man, that's all that rah-rah. Yo.